Now, what I'm going to talk about next is each of these different services has uh, pros and cons in terms of how we can bring that information into Archicad and whether or not we want to do, bring it in just using the built-in uh, importing options in Archicad or using something like Monoport to help you with managing those imported objects. So if we're using the built-in defaults in Archicad, then you know, we have the options to bring in DVG, IFC, SketchUp, Rhino, 3D, Clada DAEs, Serial Lithography. These are the built-in formats. Now I can also add in Revit RFA, which I don't have on here, but that is a add-on. It's a free add-on from BIM6X.com. And you can download that and install that, and that will be another uh, one of these options that allows me to bring that RFA on. Now, if you add on Monoport, you can bring in not only the Collada DAE, which I just mentioned is, is part of the standard in RTCAD, but it will also open up the ability for you to import an OBJ. As I just mentioned, TurboSquid is a good example where a lot of the formats there are in OBJ format. You can bring in FBX, which is another very popular format. And you can bring in 3DS. Now, there is a 3DS add-on that's free with Archicad that you can go to um, in the um, uh, accessories add-ons. Uh, if you just go to, I think it's Archicad slash um, downloads. But if you bring in, you can uh, uh, install a 3DS format. 3DS format is kind of an older format, so it's not always the best format, which is why they don't make it a default in Archicad. But it is, uh, uh, it, it is one of the formats that's available out there. Now, Modelport 2.0 that was just released really expanded these formats. We can now also bring in Moto LXO, which is a really popular uh, uh, format for doing um, sculpting and 3D painting animation. Uh, it's been a really popular visualization and artist professionals. Uh, Lightwave LWO is another really popular format for uh, 3D models and photorealistic renderings, animations, VR. Blender 3D. This is a free and open source um, 3D creation suite for modeling, rigging, animation. Again, another popular format out there amongst the many uh, artists and visualization professionals. Olympic ABC is another uh, interchange file format that can be used. Uh, AutoCAD DXF, I know many of you know this, but this is nice because now we can bring in uh, DXF models into uh, using model for, which means, I'll, as I'll show you in a minute, you have a lot more editing options that you can use with this. And finally, uh, stereolithography STL, that isn't a um, standard format Archicad as well, but of course with this now model port means that you'll have the ability to edit any of those objects uh, and those models within the model port um, uh, feature set. So let's talk a little bit about our pros and cons of built-in versus add-on converters. So with, as I'll show you in a minute, with Archicad's built-in importer, you know, it can create kind of messy 2D and 3D graphics if the model contains curves. Uh, so I'm gonna show you an example here, just to kind of get your, or kind of make you understand um, kind of the difference between um, and using a, a standard built-in uh, converter versus using something like model port. So if we go to a 3D warehouse, we can go searching for lights, right? And there's a lot of different lights, and a lot of these lights have curves to them. And so this is a great example. This is a basic schoolhouse type ceiling pendant, um, very popular for uh, these days for a lot of projects. Uh, one of the nice things that I mentioned now is that we can now export this as, or I should say download this from the 3D warehouse as a Collada file DAE format, which means that we can bring it in either in Archicad using its Collada DA import or using uh, the model port option. So if we bring this in using uh, the Archicad option, it's going to look like this when it comes in in plan. And it's going to look like this when we look at it in 3D. If we use the model port option, which I'll show you in more detail in a minute, this is the new interface for model port, then we're going to have a nice 2D graphic on the, on the 2D side of it and a very nice 3D graphic without all the extra line work on the 3D side of it. And this is a big, big deal. When you start talking about needing to, you know, bring in objects from other sources, it can get really cumbersome sometimes when you have to go through the process of doing a lot of editing to the 2D uh, graphic, even if it has no curves, it can still bring in a lot of other extra miscellaneous uh, lines and stuff. 
But particularly when it has curves, it, it really starts to muddy up these graphics on the 2D side of it and also uh, on the 3 side. Of it. So this is really important. Now, if we look at this, here is, a, if we go to ARC again and we bring in a straight SketchUp object, not a DAE object, but a straight SketchUp object, it does clean up the edges. This is a good example. This is just a simple cabinet that I'm bringing in uh, that's a Kohler um, cabinet with a sink in it. And so we're using the SketchUp plugin um, or built-in to bring it in directly uh, using the, the built-in resource in Archicad. Uh, and these are the, the, those two options. This is model for it. And so as we can see here, if we go to um, our 3D view, it's kind of the same thing. We have you know, our SketchUp, we have our DAE, and we have model port. And you can see in those three different views, three very different uh, type of um, uh, 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 quality when it was brought in. And a lot of that line work, yes, we could go to our uh, um, visualization, go to 3D styles, and I can turn off the, um, the line work there using uh, some options in the 3D, 3D style settings, uh, which is contours. You can turn contours on or off. The disadvantage of turning it off is that means it also turns the contours off for other elements where you might want to see those contours. So, you know, that, that means that, you know, you're, you're going to be basically eliminating something for the purpose of a problem you have with the object. So let's take a little bit about look at, at, at how we can edit these imported objects once they come into Archicad. And I'm going to look again at editing these objects using Archicad's built-in process. And then I'm going to look at editing the objects using uh, model course new uh, editing features. So if we were to bring in an imported object in Archicad using that same DAE format or SketchUp uh, type import format, then we would have some options when we bring that in. Once we import that in, and we open it up into our object selection settings. We do have the ability to, of course, add our name and description. We can rotate it. Uh, we could, of course, change the size of it. And we can scale it. But those are our options. Now, we can change the material, but the only way we can change the material is by going down to our model panel here and clicking that, and then basically choosing to change the panel for the, or choose to change the material for the entire uh, elm, element versus for indi individual uh, op uh, components within that. And what I mean by that is that if I bring this in and I want to change just the sink material here, I can't do that without exploding it into a morph because if I will go into the model panel and change the material, change the material for everything. That means the material for the handle, which is different, the material for um, the wood, and the material for my sink and material for the tap. All these are four different materials within here. And if I explode this into a, if I, I'm sorry, if I change, go back and choose to change it with my model uh, panel here, I'm changing it for the entire uh, element. Now I can convert this into a morph. If you've not done that before, this is a great way to do it. You can bring in an object. You can right click on that object. I can say convert selection into a morph. And it's going to tell you if you do that, and it's got large number of polygons, which this one does because of the sink and tap, they can potentially affect the performance of Archicad. And so I go ahead and convert that. And of course, now I can select this panel and I can open up my materials and I can go in and I can change with that more of just that panel. So I can do that. But of course, one of the biggest problems here so I've got to go through it. I've got to select every individual morph in this object, which can take some time to do that. Plus, it did not solve the problem of all the uh, uh, polygonal lines that have appeared here because of the curves and even areas which don't have curves. Uh, and the other problem is that it, when you explode it, you lose the textures. So if I have textures that are actually connected to this morph, then I've lost that. So, I'm sorry, uh, textures connect to the object. So that's one of the caveats of, you know, using the built-in settings uh, when you import an object is that you just simply cannot control that object in terms of the way it looks, in terms of its quality, in terms of materials, uh, in terms of graphics. Uh, you really have limited abilities for being able to control it. 
And so that was one of the reasons why Model was rebuilt today. So one of the things you'll see here is we have a new interactive selection option within um, this new uh, 3D window that we have. So we can now select elements by material or by object or element. And so in this case, I can select by the individual materials. And so rather than exploding this bed as I've imported in here, instead, I can go in and select each of the individual materials and change those as I need to as on uh, within this preview window and very quickly change that and be able to edit that. I can also control material properties such as transparency and texture. So for example, I can select the, uh, this particular uh, uh, um, picture and I can change the glass there uh, in terms of its transparency. I can select the glasses which don't even show up right now and change that transparency as well. So if I want them to be slightly uh, more opaque so I can see them better in the rendering I'm doing or in my 3D view, I can change that. And this is what's really nice about this. When I import in now uh, an object into ArcanCAD using Modelport, uh, I can simply go in and edit these elements directly within this interface. Also, you can control element visibility. Now, this is really important. One of the things that I have found uh, over the years of importing objects into ArchiCAD, whether I imported it into ArchiCAD using its built-in settings or some other add-on, is oftentimes the, the author of that object uh, didn't really think about how, you know, the fact that when uh, somebody else imports that object into their program, that, you know, if they didn't turn off certain parts of the object, that you're not going to be able to control that. So as a good example, I go, I select this light, this looks like a great light I want to use this as my project. And lo and behold, someone forgot to turn off the rendered part of it. So now I can actually go in and I can actually turn that off within Monoport by being able to control the layers. So as you can see, my layers over here to the upper right, which has a little eyes next to it, that means visibility, means I can select any element within a view now and I can actually control the visibility of that element. So in this case, as a good example, I was able to turn off that, um, that uh, uh, rendered view that an author forgot to turn off and, and be able to control that really easily. And that's really important uh, when you bring objects into ArchiCAD is being able to control the visibility of those elements. Also being able to control and, and, and manage these textures in any view. So not only can I select these elements within my 3D view, but I can select them with the, the plan view or within an elevation view uh, or, a, um, um, uh, or any other view. So this is nice because it just allows you more flexibility to be able to select and, and, and drill down to being able to edit elements that you want to work on. The other thing that's really important is being able to, to change uh, the materials within these views. So, for example, in this um, silver material of, of our barbecue here has this kind of banding on it, right? And so for me to be able to, to, to change that finish and select that and change that finish within uh, here and then be able to update that automatically in my view without even having to get out of model port allows me to quickly change my materials uh, using this built-in interface. So again, uh, just giving you more flexibility to be able to make changes here without having to explode the element, without having to go through a lot of steps to be able to simply change the material. And I can also change the texture. So we have a direct link to the textures now, so I can go and I can select a different texture from a different folder uh, and quickly being able to change that to a different JPEG with again out without having to go through a lot of, uh, of, of extra steps to be able to do that. And being able to change my pin material. So how often have we brought in uh, you know a, a 2D graphic and that graphic doesn't look the way you want it. So we want to be able to change the line weight. We want to be able to change the color. And to be able to do this directly within my settings here gives me a lot more flexibility for being able to do that. And so here I can update that. And now within my plan view, 
I have an updated object that shows uh, different colors for both 2D and 3D for that element. And this is really important because as we know, many times when we bring in these, these objects, these objects Maybe the graphics do look better than they did if I just imported them directly in ARCHICAD, but I still need to be able to edit those graphics and potentially punch some parts of it to make it thicker, uh, maybe receive some parts of it by making it thinner, and maybe if I'm doing color, be able to change the colors as well.